Hello fellow YouTubers, Bear Prepper here. Today we're going to make uh, Yankee Prepper's ketchup. And he's got the ingredients on his video. I'll put a link down below. Uh, but it's basically tomatoes, garlic, onion, uh, green peppers, red peppers, sugar, vinegar, salt, cinnamon sticks, mustard seed, peppercorns, allspice paprika, whole cloves, celery seed, basil, and jalapenos for your choice. And then I added some fresh basil and some oregano to mine. And I've, uh, I froze my tomatoes. Well, I cored them and cut them in quarters and froze them. Then when I thawed them, I peeled the skins off. They come off really easy. A little mushy, but it comes off really easy. And then I used my immersion blender to get it the beginnings of mixing up because it's still really, really cold. And you're supposed to cook it on low, but mine is so cold that I have mine on just about high. We'll see if we can get it boiling. I have my great big huge spoon here that I love goes all the way down to the bottom of the pot so that I don't burn anything. And I don't stick my hands in the bowl. So that's pretty darn good. And I did two whole garlic bulbs on mine. And only two jalapenos. So I'm going to let that get to boiling. And then I'm going to throw in my little spice bag. Like he had cinnamon sticks, um, cloves, black pepper, mustard seed. I think that's all I have in mind. And I'll throw that in for about 20 minutes. So let's get this hot and boiling and we'll get back with you. Hi, all the girls are doing our canning tonight. So there they all are. Hi, ladies. Hi, Hi there. All right, let me show you the rest of this. All right, after you get it boiling, drop in your little spice pack. And I really like the flavor of it. I just got to get some of the lumpies out of it. And it's a little, uh, little sweet, I would say. Um, so I'm hoping as it thickens it uh, and cooks down, it'll take some of that sweetness away with more of a tomato flavor. And uh, peppercorns will probably help with that, too. It's going to cook for a while because I want it a whole lot thicker than that for my ketchup. Okay, it's been cooking for about two hours. And as you can see how much it's cooked down. I used my immersion blender. And then I tried to strain it through a spaghetti strainer and my fine strainer. And none of it would go through. It was... A little too small for the spaghetti strainer and for my fine strainer it was a little too big so I did the immersion blender on it again and got it pretty darn smooth and so I've got some in the refrigerator checking the consistency to see if I'm finally where I need to be so I can get this cannon done all right uh, we have Big Bertha full I think there's 16 pints in there and I've decided to pressure can it because it is midnight, I'm tired, and if I pressure can it, I only have to do it for 20 minutes. So, I'm going to pressure can it. I also have the little one going. There are only four, three pints and one quart in there. So I think I did pretty good um, in quantity. Got lots of ketchup. It's a very spicy ketchup. So, it would be really good with shrimp. It would be really good with a little brown sugar for barbecue sauce. Um, add some milk and you can make a soup. I mean, I think it'll be a nice treat. In lots of ways I can do things with it. So I'll come back to you when I pull it out of the canner. Okay, so it's the next morning. And uh, it's looking good. I got 20 pints. Well, 19 pints in one quart. But do you see... Forgot my vinegar. Add my vinegar. Forgot my vinegar. So let's put these side by side. That's the difference between using vinegar and not using vinegar. 
in Bear County, Texas. We have got some really hard water. So now instead of having it simply rinse them off, take the rims off, rinse them off, now I'm going to have to actually scrub it to get it off. I mean, it comes right off. It doesn't hurt your product, but they sure are some ugly jars. So folks, try to remember your vinegar. So I'm going to wash these up, label them, and put them out in the retreat. Blessings. Okay, so let's show you what you can do with this wonderful, wonderful ketchup. When I got the taste in, I realized it tastes like something that I had many years ago. Uh, my ex-husband was from Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, and there's this little uh, hole in the wall that sells hot dogs. And they're called Jim's Hot Dogs. Some of you have probably heard of them. Amazing sauce on it. Well, we tried for years to duplicate it. And every time we would go, we'd bring back a, a, a quarter, a pint, and we'd taste it and experiment until we thought we got really close. But there was always something that seemed to be missing. A texture thing. Well, when I tasted my ketchup by using the immersion blender, that was what was missing. It was the texture. So what I'm going to do with my ketchup is I'm going to make Jim's hot dogs. So they're going to be Bear's hot dogs because, of course, I can't duplicate his recipe for sure. So you take a piece of foil, a hot dog, then you just take a teaspoon or so of onions and scatter it over. And you want these to be chopped fine. You don't want to bite into a huge hunk of onion. It just doesn't taste good. Then you take about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of your ketchup and sprinkle it over it. And you'll find as you do these, if you want more or less, you can always do it afterwards too. You can add additional, but you definitely want it inside the hot dog when you cook it. Then you just take some cheapo American cheese, and yes, it does taste best with American cheese. Uh, you could probably use a white cheddar or something like that, but it is going to change the flavor. And this is the flavor that tastes really good with this sauce. You're just going to fold it in half and pop it on top. Take your foil, wrap it up the sides, overlap, and then we're going to bake these for probably about 15 minutes in a 350 oven. Alright, so I have 16 here. Yes, I know that's a lot. There aren't, we aren't feeding that many people. But what you do is, the ones that are done, and you don't eat, you put them in your freezer. And then when you want to eat them, you just pop the foil off and microwave them or throw them in the oven to thaw them back out. And you can put them in your lunchbox. They stay nice because they're frozen. By the time lunchtime comes around, you don't get the soggy bread and everything. So we also tried this sauce. Ketchup from Yankee Prepper on chicken, barbecue chicken, so we did it as barbecue sauce and like beef tips and vegetables and it was wonderful. It tastes slightly different on each one. On french fries it tastes exactly like a little spicy ketchup but it tastes totally different um, out of the jar or on a meat. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out. For the cheese, don't use Kraft got a funny taste or whatever kind of cheese I used it didn't melt it should have melted and it didn't but see how steamy the onions get but I did not like the cheese so try Velveeta or shredded cheese and you'll probably have a better result because you want that cheese to melt into it blessings <laughs> 